Dash Park. So that's it. Second or two. First thing I want to talk about a little bit today is this uh, paper. Uh, I haven't read it yet. I need to need to read it, but uh, it's on ply and talks a little bit about sort of CSS and how they work. And my understanding is that they'll be working on uh, a little bit more research that sort of uh, how style sheet languages can be a little better. So tweet the link out for that. Let's let this, yeah, there we go. to read that. That's an interesting paper. Um, let's see. So, let's get that. here, cool. That is the smallest blog post I've ever written. Um, bet you have something a little bit longer here that's more interesting. Building a Docker reference for I bet you that's, that's a bit... Yeah, cool. So, this is a bunch of... a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of... Um, probably not shipping the... Haskell code syntax highlighting, which I should probably ship at some point. But in this uh, in this example, I'm using all of the code from this Gatsby MDX PR. Uh, if we can switch over to it. Uh, so last week we got basically everything working. You can now query graph or query uh, MDX source code from the GraphQL API in Gatsby uh, and then throw it into a component. So this is the normal create page that you write. Uh, you use this special function that we send, that we give you. And then that writes out all the code for you. And we basically do a generated wrapper around your content. Uh, at the end of last week, we got sort of like multi MDX files working on the same page, which was awesome. So we just sort of spread those scopes together. And uh, I published it as dev, uh, the dev tag on NPM. Uh, so if you want to play with it, it's up there as 0.0.11-dev, uh, I believe. Uh, and so this is using the new GraphQL uh, querying mechanism. 
Uh, here's all the code for that. But there's one problem. We have to do this kind of funky thing up here if we want the MDX uh, components to receive the components from the MDX provider. Um, so we're going to want to write that into the actual application itself, or into the package itself. Uh, this is, yeah, so here we go. This is the query that we're making. Uh, we're basically just pulling out the code scope, the code body, a couple of front matter things, to construct the URL. Uh, basic stuff. And then in our uh, site wrapper, which is just a React component that we're importing all over the place, we're setting up these uh, design system components that come from this design system that I wrote. And what happens is that over here on the top left, yeah, let's see if we can make that a little bigger. What happens is that you end up needing to write this uh, with MDX components wrapper to consume the MDX provider context, uh, even though you can just make the query and use everything. So we're going to write that into MDX itself, or Gatsby MDX anyway, so that we can packages. Nope, oh, we're already in. Yeah, we're already in. Um, we're going to write that right into the MDX provider, or the MDX renderer. Sorry, uh, so that we can just tell people to ignore it and not have to deal with it at all. So since I've already basically written the code, right? Um, Just gonna take this all out. Import with that DX components. So I believe this is what we want. We'll wrap this whole thing. Like that. writing in strict mode so it's yelling at me because I didn't have cool so now we have a function that uh, so this whole interior body area is our MDX runtime react component where we can render arbitrary MDX code into uh, any site um, we're just wrapping that with the with it, with MDX components uh, export from the MDX provider file in the MDX.js tagged uh, MDM package. And it's not actually an ex it's like, so the exports for the MDX provider, it only exports uh, MDX tag, which is used in the compiled uh, code snippet, which will end up in children. And the MDX provider, which we're wrapping everything with, uh, but the dist, the distribution doesn't include the named export from MDX provider called MDX, with MDX components. Um, so you can see they're creating uh, the React context here, and we basically need, we need to import that to access this context or we're not going to be able to. So this is us importing it in using it. Uh, and we should be able to just swap over to our I'll kill this blog and then talk out to the middle. Get this a little clear so everybody can see it. Cool, and then uh, So this will run the kitchen sink, and the kitchen sink should just work at this point. Like it, we didn't make any drastic changes. Um, I'll be able to just push this because we're already. Probably doing all of this. I want. I'm going to want to add an MDX provider at the root of the application, 
start right because this is now hot reloading into a site that doesn't exist. Um, so all of this should just work still. Uh, there's nothing really funky that we just did, but we should use this MDX provider somewhere in the example. So let's write that in. We'll do the kitchen sink example. We'll go into our components. Are we using? We're doing this runtime thing for the MDX runtime test. So we can import our MDX provider here. do everything to render, we can just say, okay, we're going to have this MDX provider. Uh, we'll bootstrap that components prop, we'll kill it over here. We'll say uh, something silly, right? Uh, we have H1s in every single, in every single uh, component. So let's do uh, something like this, right? So we're gonna just replace the H1 tag that the markdown renders. And this is sort of like, this is one of the really powerful parts of using MDX for all of this stuff, is that you can just sort of replace anything at any time with whatever you want. Uh, We can just sort of like provide the children and then we can just like spread the props in here. Oh, that's two dots, we need three. And if we do that, then we get an error because I messed up my syntax somewhere. <laughs> uh, random method of the extra time test, of course, because that's the thing we're dealing with. Let's reload the page. Type is invalid, expected a string or a class. What did I do wrong here? That's a function that returns those things. That should be fine. So I did something silly when I wrote my component here. So let's do this make sure that that is actually the issue. Oh, this is the extra object there though. Oh, you know what I did probably? Yeah, no, I screwed up my import. Uh, I do this all the time, actually. I can never remember which, when I'm writing it in the moment, I can never remember which uh, thing to import from. So this just comes from mvxjs uh, slash tag, which means, so the error we were saying was um, uh, react create element type is invalid, expected a string for built-in components like div or class or function for like our components, like the one that I'm writing right now. Uh, and this should be fine. Yeah, cool. So now we've sort of, we've replaced any, this should just update, right? Yeah, so we've replaced every H1 that's rendered inside of this wrapper with this extra component. Um, and because we've done this inside of Gatsby and DX, now people don't have to wrap it themselves like I did over here, right? Which is nice. Like, God, I love that feature so much. That's the component replacement stuff. Yeah, that is like top of the world, man, for sure. Um, But yeah, so that's that's that. That's like a super easy fix. Uh, we'll just push that up into the PR. Um, I'm probably going to republish that. Oh, actually, you know what I do before I do this? 
so yarn is doing these like commits that I don't really want there because uh, I was just sort of publishing these for dev uh, but I want the remove consoles what are the chances that I can write this reset uh, correctly on the first try let's see Get reset. no I don't want to reset I want to what do I want to do Let's do this. Let's add this as a commit so we don't lose it. Add uh, MDX provider. Cons oh, I always do that too. I like the second letter of half the words that I write for code identifiers are capitalized. Add MDX provider consumer to MDX. So that's fun. Um, let's do this. Get rebase i. Let's take these, move them here, squash them. So what I'm doing right now is, actually I can drop them. <laughs> uh, I usually don't drop commits, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying like, hey, these three things aren't really things that I want, more or less. Like, I basically did a yarn publish tag, dash dash tag with the dev tag to get these out. Um, and I'm gonna have to actually save this edit in part so I remember it later. Um, and what I'm doing here is basically just like, we made a commit just now that I want to keep, that I want to push up, but the other commits were just like local things that Yarn did for me, uh, that I don't really want to save. I don't want to push them anywhere. So, yeah, we're just going to do that. Save file. Yes, save file. So that should be it. And we should we should have lost those commits now. Yeah, so we don't have those package commits anymore. But we do have the remove consoles and we do have the uh, MDX providers. So if you ever need to get rid of a couple commits just because you did something silly or did something that you don't really want to keep, uh, git rebase dash i is like majorly cool. Um, and if you re ever really, really, really screw up, uh, git ref log is your, your best friend. So let's push that up, make sure it pushes up here. That will probably uh, deploy the, uh, yep, there we go, we pushed it up. We're gonna get the kitchen sink deployed again. Uh, so yeah, now we have Circle CI running tests, which is great. We have uh, Netlify shipping the docs site that doesn't have any any real docs on it yet. We need to get on that. Uh, I guess we yet. But here's the kitchen sink, which is the one we were just looking at. And then Gatsby MDX dot, yeah, dot Netlify. It's just this page. <laughs> it points you back to the MDX docs. It doesn't even point you to the Gatsby MDX docs. Uh, so we need to fix that at some point. See if this refreshes. That's the other thing. Our kitchen sink example injects some global styles uh, on the homepage, but it doesn't it doesn't inject them on uh, non home pages. So you get this effect where it's just like, hey, you didn't inject the global styles, and it doesn't exist. Congratulations. So we're basically just waiting for that to make sure that it deploys here. Circles passed. Uh, let's check the build log on kitchen sink. Site is live. Cool. It has 
doesn't look like the same slide. Hard refresh, go to one of these pages. That doesn't look like it's using this stuff. Wonder. Oh, it's a deployed. Ugh. That's great. That's that's what I want it to be, but. Um, so yeah, this was a deployed review, not the actual site. So if you want to see this, you have to click on this. And this should have it. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So if you want to see this, uh, it's, I'll put the link in chat. You go play with the site if you want it. But yeah, it uses the MDX renderer. Uh, and that's by default now. So let's let's get that published so I can remove this from the other site. Um, and we can, where are we in here? Packages, that's BMGX. So let's do yarn publish. So we're publishing with a dev tag. Uh, this will be 0.0.11 dev.2. Because I should have named the other one dev.1, so. But this will this will publish a dev tag for us, which is what I have the other one. Gonna try it out, nice. Um, yeah, so also you can try out this package if you want to. It's uh, It works just like the normal one, it's just under the dev tag instead of uh, the normal release. There's no guarantee that that dev tag will not change in horrendous ways out from under your feet. Like the, like we try not to change the official versions, but uh, if you if you want to download it and play with it before we merge the PR, then you're more than welcome to. So we don't need this stuff anymore. Um, so let's just start this back up. stuff you can do with SDF. Okay, so obviously I don't have this theme sorted out yet because I got distracted building this Gatsby MDX project. <laughs> Look at this. this, this image is way larger than it needs to be. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is working and then let's do the yarns because you need to reinstall with the new dev. Um, yeah, so we added also two new packages uh, as dependencies of Gatsby MDX. One of them is this, this needs to be bigger, and it needs to pull out because I need to, is there, does anyone know if there's a way to make iTerm not blow the window size up when you increase the font size? That would be amazing. Um, in any case, we have Babel, Babel plugin pluck imports. Uh, which is published in a dev version right now, and Babel plugin pluck exports, which is in the same thing, and those are just helping us with the uh, scope and body uh, code generation stuff. Um, the code for those is in the SBMDX packages uh, directory, if you feel like looking into those. I should probably document them, but there's some tests and it shows what they do, so. Cool, so let's start this back up. Did we actually get what we wanted here? And check with yarn why uh, Gatsby MDX. Why do we have Gatsby MDX? Lock files indirect. Oh. That's the other thing. I didn't, 
the uh, the Babel plugins are currently specified as star in the Gatsby MDX package.json because I just wanted to test everything out before we shipped it. And uh, now you have to specify which versions to use every time you use them. So that is horrible. And uh, we should definitely not ship that. Not that I was intending to, but just the user experience of having that pop up on every command is horrid. I'm really interested in how you hit the race condition. Um, I don't know if my code is just significantly different than yours or something, um, or if I just like, I saw some error as a precursor to that race condition and I was like, oh, I shouldn't do that, I'll do something else. Um, yeah, I, have, I don't know. Um, I've never hit that race condition though. Uh, for the people following along that are not him, the race condition he's talking about is uh, this issue. Uh, cannot read property front matter of null. Oh, it's probably because I don't edit my front matter. You you get it up when you edit your front matter, right? And sometimes other parts of the post. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know what this is doing uh, internally to cause this, but yeah, Kyle says it's a, a Gatsby core issue, so hopefully that'll be fixed for you by the time 2.0 hits uh, 1.0, 2.0 hits 2.0, 2 I guess. <laughs> uh, comes out of RC or whatever version it is right now. Um, I think it's still in beta, yeah. Beta, 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 beta 99. Did they go to beta 100? Did they? That would be kind of hilarious. I don't see it. That's definitely a beta 99. Are we in RC yet? No, we're not in RC yet. So they're at beta 99 right now? That's crazy. Yeah, so that's the race condition. I don't, we, I don't know why it happens. I don't know anything about it, really. Um, it's interesting that it happens all the time to you and doesn't happen to me on stream at all, which, knock on wood, will probably be the next thing that happens to me. And I'll probably never be able to fix it. Yes, this is, this is working. Let's go back to our develop. Now that we have the right Gatsby version, or the Gatsby MDX version. You know what I should have done? I should have removed the with MDX components, put this code back to the way I had it originally, shown the error, and then installed the new version. Because that would have been smart but instead what I'm going to do is just pull the MDX renderer out and replace it and it's going to look exactly the same and nobody's going to know that we actually I can prove that this is happening okay let's do this let's look at the react tools because just just for my own sanities especially uh, I want to make sure that this is you know, uh, rendering using the component that I wrote up there. Component function. So that's the code body. And the yeah, scope. Is that are those the only two things getting passed into that function? No, components is also getting passed into that function. So here's the context consumer. That's good. There's the component code body. That's good. Um, so we should see this component go away, I believe. Because this is the wrapper that has the with component in it. So
So when we move this down, also I don't know why that's not called renderer, to be perfectly honest. Because it is named. In any case, that's the right positioning, that's the right uh, stuff. So this is MGX scope, which is fine, and this is data.mgx.code body. Oh, you know what'll be. So if we remove this. Oh yeah, I screwed up the top one. So we don't need to pass in components as a prop anymore. We don't need to deal with it anymore. We don't need this uh, extra thing anymore. So this code should be all we that we need to get that to work. But it doesn't look as that's currently the case. This renderer should be pulling in the context. Yeah, so that's not great because it's not working. Um, and we do have, I think, the right version. I checked before, but I already forgot. Um, why? So we need dev.2 here. Oh, we don't have the right version. Okay, so this is great, actually. Um, so I did the thing that I said I should have done before. I replaced the code, uh, showed that it didn't work, and now we're going to upgrade. <laughs> uh, can I do an upgrade interactive here? I wonder if this will pick up. See, like, upgrade interactive latest picks up versions that are oh can I do upgrade interactive beta or something I wonder let's try this I wonder if they just take this and use it oh they do oh that's amazing I didn't even know they did that So for future reference, if you ever have to update beta versions of something, you can do, why is that showing up twice though? That's weird. That looks like a bug. Why would it, what, I don't know what other package.json it would be picking up. Um, yeah, that's really weird. Blah, blah. Expected manifest. That's interesting. Right, right, so mdxjs tag. So do we think that actually worked? It's th it threw an error, but. No, it did not work. I wonder if passing in this dev flag has a bug because nobody ever uses it. Alright, well, let's just go in ourselves and we'll do it. Um, actually, we're just going to remove the lock file and they'll have to do it for us. Uh, That's interesting. Maybe I'll save that and check it for later and see if I can submit some kind of bug report or something. So, pick version, pick version. Yeah, so before we publish the official release, I need to fix these. Uh, stars in the Gatsby MDX. Um, 
Let's see, why did I bump it to 15-2? Okay, so let's check Y again, make sure that we have the right thing. Cool, that's good, that's good. Uh, develop. One of your plugins changed. We're deleting your entire site. Yay! Um, yeah, I need to figure out what to do with these images. They're wrapped in paragraph tags, so I feel like they should already be rendered with the max width is on all of the other ones. Oh, that's interesting. It broke. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's figure out what happened here. Prop location is marked as required in scroll context. Oh no, I deleted the uh, yarn.lock file and now it uh, now it pulled in a version of something that doesn't work. Ah, that's the whole reason for lock files, man. Path name of undefined? That's not even relevant. That's related to the... I bet you that's reach router upgrade stuff. Because Gatsby just recently uh, merged support for uh, Reach Router instead of React Router, which is awesome. Uh, because Reach Router is that's React Router. Oh, I typed React Router. Why did I type React Router? Because that's on the Marine Reach Router. There we go. So Reach Router is pretty awesome. Reach Router is sort of like an accessible uh, React Router variant. Um, but I think that because of the errors that I'm seeing right here with like the location prop and scroll context and like the path name of undefined, uh, that there's something here that accidentally upgraded when I deleted that yarn.lock and I need to fix it. Um, I wonder if anybody's hitting this on Gatsby already. Right, because somebody has to have installed this. Place, blah, blah, blah. I bet you it would be a closed issue if it was an issue. Location is marked as required in score all contests. Okay. Eek. Okay, so this has to be a me thing. Um, because if, if anybody else had encountered this, it would be. An issue. Ooh, what is this? This is an issue from May 8th. I think that's way before Reach Router was. React Router scroll. I wonder. Is it automatically included? You can remove and remove and use a scroll context. Huh. Okay, so let's act for scroll context. always a terrible decision when you still have the cache around because I still haven't added that to my FRC ignore and it's not cache so what am I doing what am I hitting here any node modules or something all right let's type this into this public public oh right there's public um, so let's look up the syntax for that briefly 
ACRC ignore directory. So there's an ACRC file that I can put in the root of my um, root of everything. There is ignore dir pair. That's what we want. So. Echo, and then we'll do uh, order public. Wonder if that'll work, or that'll insert a literal new line. Ignore der dot cache. If I can type. Cool. So act. Uh, should now not hit that at all. Perfect. So now we don't have public, we don't have um, cache when we hack, which is awesome. I really love hack, by the way. Hack is awesome if you don't use it. I know there's like 15 million options these days for sort of grep and rip grep and hack and I think there's one in rust and uh, but hack is always it's, it's a slight upgrade from grep and I don't shell into servers enough to need to learn how to use grep all the time so okay so let's try to figure out what happened here so this is all the stuff that officially upgraded Slugify, Superbox, none of those things. Um, we're in 15 of MDX, which is good. MDX render, that's that's all of the upgrades, right? Unless there's a transitive dependency here that Babel plugins, Emotion Serialize, Emotion MDX. MDX reach router. There we go. That's that's our reach router upgrade. So we definitely pulled in reach router. Um, I don't know what that'll do to everything. I don't know if there was an upgrade path for that. Um, let's try to find out. These are all recent, which is good. Redirect needs to be inside a router, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reach router doesn't add a hash to whip all location object like reach router, react router did. Oh, there's a migration guy. Yes. That's what I'm looking for. The old. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we switched our router from React Router V4 to Reach Router, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's smaller. That's dope. Not that I was really concerned about my router size because it's sort of core to my applications, but smaller is cool. Um, the object form of the two and the link component you apply side routes. Neither of those I don't think I don't think I use either of those. That's Z schemas. Interesting. Apollo link. Yeah. Oh, we'll get exports. Okay. So there's nothing really else interesting. Um, let's see. Link to 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 URL, links, link, link. Doesn't look like any of those are 
I should probably ignore sense in this too. Why do I have a folder called my pen? Is that my old? That's got to be my old uh, attempt at MDX. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is the original repo that I started using. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's exactly what that is. I'm gonna have to remove that. That's not checked in, is it? The git keep was checked in, but nothing else was. Okay. So that was the original place that I was writing out these cache files um, before we write them out into dot cache. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's what it's doing. It's picking up on all the, okay. So I, I get subtree my design system into this repo. Um, and that's why I'm seeing two of them when I do yarn upgrade interactive. But we don't use the object form of link. History prop is no longer passed. Navigate. Let's do let's look for explorers. Yeah. Oh no, that's this, so this whole thing is just a D2 upgrade. This is not actually what I want or care about. Oh, relative routes aren't working. That's interesting. Uh, I wonder if I do any relative routes. Nope, nope, absolute, absolute. <sighs> I don't know why this broke. Debugging things on a live stream, that's always great. Um, Let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, does it happen on the index page or only on the post page? That's an interesting thing to know. Yeah, this is wild. I don't, I mean, it's obviously a reach router issue for some reason, permanent register, proxy console. That is not even close to what I need. <laughs> That's weird. Unregister stack, what file even is that? So location is marked as required in scroll context. Um, let's take a look at the other things in the package JSON dependencies and see if we're not using next on one of them. File system fine, prism fine, pouts fine, topography components fine. I should get rid of eval. I probably don't need eval anymore. Um, next, next, next. I wonder if Gatsby Transformer Remark is pulling in something silly. We should get rid of that. Doesn't really have any place there anymore because I don't use I don't use Remark anymore. I use uh, MDX. That should be at next anyway. Um, we'll get rid of eval because we don't need that either. Prettier prism react, promotion helmet prism, subify, style system secret box. All of those look good. Source file system needs to be at next because everything else is next. And what are you to gap speed? Oh, okay. That's that. There's the issue. Um, so there was an issue in Gatsby Beta 58, right? And I used Yarn to 
forcibly resolve that 57 until it got fixed, and now it's fixed, and um, we should reinstall. So I'm probably not getting an updated version of Gatsby, but I'm getting an updated version of some other stuff uh, that depends on an updated version of Gatsby. Did I just delete that? Or did I? Yeah, there we go. Um, we'll see if that worked. Dependencies. Man, they're just like... I bet you that was the issue though. Um, running in, oh, what is that? Was that a dynamic counter for query time? Did you see that? I'm gonna have to rerun this. This thing, I think this thing updated dynamically. That's really cool. I wonder who did that. Should thank them. Okay, so looks like we're still getting some issues over here. Yep, location still. Um, let's kill the yarn.lock. again so that we get fully modern versions of everything. So now let's see the queries. Let's see this and that. And this looks like it's going to update dynamically right there at the bottom when it's a GraphQL query. Nope. Oh right, because we're not running to develop <laughs> I'm running yarn install. Okay, here, here we go. Eight pages. That that's dope. That's sort of like we run and queries for you. This is how long it's taking, kind of thing. It is dope. Uh, not that it takes so long that I care, but okay. What is this? This is received true for non-boolean attribute exact. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. Let's go look at the reach router docs because I know I'm doing that in my code. Uh, oh, that's reactive flux. I don't want to be in reactive flux. I want to be in uh, the reach router docs. And I typed react router again. Reach router, okay. Let's do. Uh, path equals is interesting. So I need like a navigation link or something, or whatever the equivalent is in the reach router world. Now, nav link to nav link is a link that is wrapped. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it looks like we're doing something new here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. No, pages, index. See, here's the inject global that we're doing in this index page that doesn't start up, uh, apply everywhere else. Title, nav, so it's going to be in navigation, which is going to be um, affecting the other page too. This is link, that's a styled link. Get props, interesting. The object return here is passed to the anchor elements props. So get props is an interesting API here. Um, let's move this to a different links really so let's go for link uh, I don't really need a tutorial I just want the docs link 
to Wrath to get props. Calls up to you to get props for the underlying anchor element. He's focused on the anchor is active. Um, yeah, but we already have that functionality from style component that we're using for this. So does that, uh, I bet you there's an underlying state for that. All right, well, well, we can do that. We can change that, that's not too hard. Um, there's get props. So get props is a prop that we pass to the link. Hmm. It's sort of unfortunate that we can't. We're going to sort of have to wrap this now. All right, well, we can wrap it. That's fine. style component is going to be a G-Link with a CSS blah 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 and then this will do a uh, get props get props will have Is current um, will return exactly what he's doing right here. So class name equals um, and we'll make this our active nav link thing down here because we don't need to actually pass that in anymore. Anyway, he has null in the documentation here, so I'll use null. the object. I guess we don't need exact anymore. Exact doesn't exist. Um, that's interesting. So let's get rid of exact then. so it doesn't look like we're getting that warning anymore. So let's move on. Oh, that's screwed up a bunch of our styles though. So 
I'll have to go back and fix that. Wait, why did that screw up our styles? Am I not running the Babel plugin? Uh, let's change this. All oh, right, because I didn't have it. going on there. Class name, the link, the props. You need this to just apply all the time. Why is this not? What is going on here? Um, this should just Take that class name, right? That's bizarre. Yeah, that should just work. Um, I did something weird here. I don't know. Must have, anyway. Anyway, I'll fix that later. That's not relevant. And then... We can post, we on post, we can click into our thing, and it's here, and it's using the MDX provider. Yay, um, that is what I wanted to do. So that works now, um, and we've proven it works. It was a little bit of a roundabout, actually. Um, it's a little more roundabout than I wanted it to be. But it is what it is, right? And then uh, the rest of this is just going to be me writing documentation. So I'm probably going to cut the stream there today. Um, the streams are usually going to run at least an hour. Uh, I think today it'll run just about an hour. And then most of the time I'll probably run two hours, whether I start a little early or end a little late. Um, but yeah, so that's published as uh, the dev tag if anybody wants to play with that. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Um, it'll be two to three again tomorrow. And uh, thanks for coming out. Yeah, man, thanks for coming.